Help me, am I living in a cursed house? How do you know if you are living on defiled land, if you are living on unholy ground and what to do to get rid of it? In the Old Testament, the word defiled land is used 11 times, three times in Leviticus, one time in Numbers, one time in Deuteronomy, one time in Jeremiah, and three times in the book of Ezekiel. The word defiled in Hebrew means is tame, which means to be foul, especially in a ceremonial or a moral sense. There is such a thing as defiled land, where occultic practices has happened, sin, Idols have been worshipped, broken covenants have happened, Your, uh, people have offended, purposefully offended the law of God, shed innocent blood, or, or practiced immorality, perversion. And just as carcasses attract the vultures of the air, so defied land attracts spiritual wickedness. Remember in the book of Exodus chapter 3. When Moses saw the burning bush, God said, take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. So also there are places in this world where the ground is unholy, defiled. The Bible also talks about the blood of the innocent screaming out from the ground. And what do we need to purge the land or cleanse our homes is to perform spiritual spring cleaning. There are two important parts of spiritual spring cleaning, that is our homes and also our own personal lives. And in today's episode, I will cover how to do spiritual spring cleaning in your house. Uh, of course, we need to remove spiritual infestation and sanctify our house to God Almighty. Some of the symptoms of spiritual infestation in the house where you live can be things such as sudden ongoing illness, continual bad dreams and nightmares, insomnia and the inability to sleep peacefully, behavioral problems among the adults or children in the family, which is like continuing fighting or misunderstanding and there's no peace, uh, unexplained illnesses, chronic headaches, fatigues all the time, heightened bondages such as mental or physical perversion, uh, addictions and so on and so forth. You can maybe see ghosts or demonic demonic apparitions, literally seeing a man in the house walking around or in the night you wake up and there is a man there or a woman standing in your house, you can see their shadow, maybe not their face, or you see the same person all the time in your dreams, in your nightmares, and you only have the dreams specifically when you're sleeping in that house. Poltergeist is another manifestation of it, that is the movement or uh, uh, movement of physical objects in the house where doors slam open or plates are thrown down and everything it can be extremely scary if you don't understand or see what is happening foul unexplainable odors where you're smelling something in the house you you do not know where it comes from it's like an unexplainable odor and also atmospheric heaviness like for example having a hard time breathing or just feeling like it's such a heavy atmosphere in there and the spiritual infestation might have happened due to former owners or something that you yourself might have done many times though it is things that have happened through generations and the longer that these things have been going on the stronger they get i want to share with you a quick experience this is a story from alice smith in the book of how to minister freedom and i quote i was a real estate agent in houston texas i once listed a very attractive home on the north side of the town that had every promise for a good sale the renters had moved out, the owners, a precious but confused Christian couple, now wanted to sell the house. They confided in me that they felt something was wrong with the house. They were right. Even though I had contracted the house to be painted inside and out and installed new wallpaper and carpet, I still couldn't sell this home. So one day I took a team of praying people to the vacant house with me. Before we could get out of the car, our son said that he felt the Lord speak to him that a teenage boy had practiced witchcraft in this home. Then he said to us, there is a black spray painted pentagram on the ceiling of the house. I told him that this was impossible because I had listed the house and no such thing was there. But realizing the nature of the revelation, we determined to look inside the attic. We pulled the rope opening the door to the attic and climbed in. As we turned on the light, our eyes locked on a huge black pentagram that had been sprayed on the bare wood around the beams. As the owners repented for the defilement of the home and we dedicated it to the Lord by prayers of sanctification, we were confident that he had heard our prayer. Less than 12 hours later, the home sold for full price after having been on the market for over six months. 
end of quote. Now, this is a typical example of demonic infestation in a house where occultic practices had been practiced and left the ground unholy. Acts not, chapter 19 talks about it. In verse 18, it says this, And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevail. I want to share something with you about this. First of all, nobody told them or forced them to burn their books. This was from personal conviction. I'm not telling you to burn anything in your house or get rid of anything. That's completely your own decision. But for those who are suspecting that there is something going on in your house, this might be the way to take. Secondly, the value of this was actually mentioned in the Bible, and that's because it was such a magnificent number. I googled the um, uh, rough amount of 50,000 pieces of silver in biblical times, and it counts up to about $4 million today. And it says that after these things happened, the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So there is a connection there. Sometimes the movement, forward movement of the kingdom of God can be hindered because of these things. It needs to be dealt with pro properly. You cannot keep infestation of cockroaches in your house and expect to live at peace. You have to get rid of it from the root of it. Deuteronomy chapter 18 says, When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found anyone among you who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, soothsaying, or one who interprets omens, a sorcerer, anyone who conjures spells, or a medium, a spiritist, or one who calls the dead. For all these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these things, the Lord your God drives them out before you. So being involved witness of or, or included in such practices can have such results. So what are some of the things that can actually cause the objects that can cause this spiritual infestation in your house or things that have happened? Here is a list and this is in no way a complete list of things that you need to get rid of. I'm just throwing it out there that these are the kind of objects that could possibly bring in spiritual infestation in your house. First of all, objects related to heathen worship, such as Hindu gods, yoga snakes, dragons, pyramids, crystals, broken crosses, Buddha figurines, rosary beads, prophecy sticks, witchcraft objects, prayer cloths that aren't Christian, face masks, worship artifacts, items dedicated by a shaman, totem poles, gargoyles, tarot cards, tea leaves, voodoo dolls, and so on and so forth. Objects of worship that isn't Jesus Christ. Secondly, objects relating to the occult, such as Ouija board, horoscopes, astrology books, demonic tattoos, books on reincarnation, Kabbalah books, Satanist material, New Age material, and so on and so forth. Also, movies with immoral behavior or excessive violence, pornographic movies, pictures, websites, magazines, or, or movies or websites that depict extreme gory violence can also be because it's an abomination before the Lord. Music that demonstrates a uh, demonic or depraved uh, mental Im Im imagery, filthy words uh, that creates interest in death, murder, drugs, violence, or crime. Statues such as goddesses, demon demonic statues, demonic action figures, Mardi Gras beads, dowsing rods, pendulums, and so on and so forth. Books that deal with genies, and frightening themes, books related to Satanism, witchcraft, New Age, rebirthing, astrology, Christian science, Mormonism, Freemasonry, Grangers, Taoism, Confucius, philosophy, Scientology, uh, Jehovah's Witness, Quran, Geomancy, Numerology, Roy Masters, Transcendental Meditation, Hare Krishna, Martial Arts, Baha'ism, and Rosicrucianism. Also, art or jewelry with obvious demonic representations such as snakes, dragons, gargoyles, yin-yang, broken crosses, upside-down crosses, swastikas, crystal objects used for purpose of creating power, shaman worship objects, fetishes, uh, fiat armbands, amulets, good luck charms, good luck bracelets. Get rid of it. Once again, personal conviction, as it says in the books of Acts 19, is important. Nobody forced them to do it. They willfully did so. We are not forcing anyone to do anything here today. You do whatever you want to do. 
But if you're experiencing such symptoms, as mentioned earlier, I suggest pray about it, sanctify your house and get rid of those objects. Right now, I want to say a prayer in which how you can uh, perform the spiritual spring cleaning. Apart from throwing away those things in your house, don't give it away to anyone. Throw it away. You don't need to burn it. That's just a symbol of completely obliterating it and getting rid of it. Uh, once again, you don't need to burn stuff. Just throw it away is enough. Uh, also, uh, it is the spiritual part of it because sometimes I have experienced people who burnt stuff but they didn't pray over it. So spiritually, the curse attached to that object was still in the house, even though the object itself was burnt. So it's not the physical burning of stuff that would rid you of the spiritual plague of your house. It is actually the prayer that do it. An example of a prayer of sanctification, you can go around in your house and anoint. If you have anointing oil or something, anoint the doorposts of your rooms in your house and of your house. The, the four corners of your house, pray over them. Lay your hands if you don't have anointing oil or anything. Lay your hands and pray in the name of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is more powerful than any other commodity on this world. So a prayer that I would pray entering every room is for, for example like this. In the mighty name of Jesus, I lay my hands on the doorposts of this room, on the doorpost of this house, on the corner of this house right now in the name of Jesus. I ask for forgiveness if there's anything that I have done to cause spiritual defilement of this house. I break every curse spoken out every ceremonial defilement and demonic infestation in this house, I command it to be broken over my house today in Jesus' name. I cover the four corners of this house with the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Every demonic influence, leave right now and get out in the name of Jesus. I cover the house with the blood of Jesus. I cover the doors, the entry points to this house with the blood of Jesus. I cover every corner, every window, every, every area, every square foot, every square meter of this house with the blood of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name, may it be sanctified. Lord, come with your spirit and, and break every curse spoken. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And that's it. There is nothing more you need to do. As you do so, God Almighty will, will affect those words and break whatever things that might have happened in your house. If you enjoy this content, please like, leave a, a thumbs up and share in the comments other things you would want us to cover in the future. And also share this with someone that needs to hear it. God bless you and I'll see you soon again.